What is going on guys? Marcus here with the Reformation Wood Shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make five Christmas projects out of scrap wood. All these projects are going to be super approachable and pretty easy to do if you have a time crunch and you're trying to pump out some decorations. Also, if you're looking to clear out the scrap wood bin, this video is for you. Okay, for starters, project number one, I'm not going to go over too much because it's kind of simple. It's just a triangle. I uh, made these two little Christmas trees and this Olaf that I'm going to show you how I created the little features for them here in a second, but I made these two little Christmas trees just like I made all the other two by six cutoffs for my last decorative video. I made a video covering Halloween decorations and I did tombstones and ghosts similar to this process. So if you want to check that out, it's just cut in shape out of a two by six. No big deal. I cut it out on the miter saw, which is a kind of sketchy cut. But it's something you can do. Bandsaw, jigsaw, table saw. There are lots of ways to cut these. I'll show you how I made the Olaf and uh, what all went to that though. You can't really see him there because he's, he's kind of short, but I feel like I should be inserting the Do You Want to Build a Snowman song somehow, so. Uh... Elsa? So if you're familiar with Olaf, he has three little twigs on his head that represent his hair, two little twig arms, and a little carrot nose. So I grabbed some sticks out of the yard and that's what I made all those things out of. If it feels like this project is super simple and basic, that's because it is. I made this specifically to hand over to the kiddo and I didn't want to make anything complex that I would feel invested in if she inevitably destroyed it. His hand, yeah, he's got hands and hair. And mouth and eyes. All right, so this next project you can thank my wife for. Um, if it wasn't for her, I would have no idea that these exist. So uh, we're gonna make stocking tags, and these are gonna be super simple, little additions to your stockings to identify them if you don't wanna write with a Sharpie, like we did when I was a kid, on your stocking. So I'm true to my word, I'm digging through the scrap wood pile. I found a nice cutoff from a cutting board that I made a long time ago, and it is a piece of walnut, so it's gonna be a little fancy. I'm cutting the piece of walnut into quarter inch strips and then I'll take those strips and cut them into what looks like a price tag and then that will serve as a nameplate for our stockings. To achieve that signature shape, all I do is chop off two corners, drill the hole straight through the top, and then I'm using this countersink bit to make the inside where I'll loop a piece of string through look really nice, clean, and finished. All right, so if your eye is sharp enough, you'll notice that these name tags are not the ones that I just oiled. After I oiled them, my wife tried to vinyl them and the oil made it so that the vinyl would not stick. So I remade them, she vinyled them, and then I oiled them after. All that's left to do is tie a loop and hang it up with your stocking. All right, this next project is borderline reclaimed. It is not reclaimed woods from old projects, but it is a log that I cut out of my tree. It's important to note here that you can only use wood that has been sitting and has been dried to a certain extent. If you use wood that's not been thoroughly dried, it will continue to dry after you've built your project and oils will come out of it. It will crack because it's drying too fast now that it's a thin slice. Lots of problems come up, make sure it's dry. So from this log, we're gonna be making ornaments on the scroll saw. Now, in hindsight, after seeing what these became, I wish I would have used a stencil because I hand drew the cross and the Christmas tree, and I could have done a better job. What is it? A Christmas tree. A oh, Christmas tree. Okay, it must not be that bad if she can recognize it. I guess they're not that bad, but if you use a stencil, these will come out perfect. All right, show me. Hey, no, no, look at me. Show it to me. Show it to the camera. Mine. And okay, there's yours. That looks so good. I'm gonna hang mine right there. Does that look good? There's mine. So the first few projects were pretty approachable and easy to do. This is where things get a little bit more complex and have a few more steps. Although I've used pallet wood in a ton of other projects before, 
in my past. This is probably the first time on this channel you've ever seen me use pallet wood. So I'm laying out my pallet wood. I'm gonna secure a piece of three quarter inch plywood to the back of it and then cut out a circle to make a wreath. Making a circle is super simple when you have a compass like this. First I make the big round circle and it is about 24 inches wide. And then I go inside and make the smaller inner circle and it's probably about 12 inches wide. So normally to make a circle, I would use my router setup, but oftentimes people complain about not being able to do certain things because they don't have certain tools. So today it's jigsaw all day, and then I'm gonna sand it smooth because the jigsaw leaves a rough cut. But if you've got a jigsaw, you can make a circle, easy. All right, so to finish off this wreath, I kind of broke my rules here. I wanted to do all scrap wood, all recycled, all reused product. So uh, I was gonna just do some random Christmas decorations that we had in a box. I wanted to really make it pop. So I went and bought some sparkly Rudolphs. They were 12 bucks at Lowe's. I'm sorry, I broke the rules, but I want this to look really cool. So this string of lights is battery powered, which means I don't have to plug it into anything, which is nice. All I'm going to do is hot glue it all to the face of the wreath and then hot glue the battery pack to the back and then put a little mistletoe on there, you know, so I can sneak a kiss as soon as I get home every day. And uh, that's it. This thing is done. For the last project, we are going to be going back to the scrap pile, grabbing one of the same boards I used for the last Halloween video where I made the welcome or actually beware sign for our front porch. And now uh, we're going to be making a Christmas tree. So I wasn't too sure of the angles that I needed to cut to make this tree symmetrical. So I did a little fidgeting with it and I decided that a 50 degree cut and a 40 degree cut on the bottom of the leaves of the tree would be perfect. You'll understand what I mean by leaves, I guess, here in a second. So to make sure everything is in line, I marked the center line down the center of this two x four. And then I'll just place the 50 degree angle on that center line all the way down the board. So up until this point, there's been a gradual step up by an inch every single time. Seven inches, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can even see it's written on there. 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, this is where I want the base of the Christmas tree to be. It's where I want it to end so I can have that as trunk. So now I will have to meet that and that and all. They're all going to have to level out right here. So. The challenge is finding out the way to do that. I'm going to take this, run it right there, and then I'm going to come up here and scrap a line to make it square right with that. Even if it's off just by a little bit, it's supposed to be rustic branches. But if you do decide that you need to be OCD and make sure it is exactly straight, you can always come in with a circular saw and cut straight along this line that we create here in a little bit. So I'm gonna cut these pieces, make them all fit, and then I will be close to being done. Bam, that is a Christmas tree. The last thing to do to make this Christmas tree finish is to make it stand up. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna be cutting, grab pieces of one by four and lapping it around the base so that it makes an X type pattern. Looks good to me. So I uh, stood it up and I just wanna let you know that I just made this decision on the fly just now, right now, I'm not sanding it, I'm not painting it, I'm not doing nothing. And it's important to me that you know that it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I think it looks cool. 
rustic and beautiful. It is a little dirty, so I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper, probably this sponge right here, and get the dirt off so I can put it in the house. But other than that, nothing. It's beautiful. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you make some cool Christmas decorations and you empty out that scrap bin and you don't throw it in the burn barrel. You put it to use and make your house look holly and jolly for Christmas. If you wanna see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, all that cool stuff. If you liked the video, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho, ho.